we have something to talk about today toward keeping our pitchers safe, and that's the danger of excessive lateral trunk tilt, which is something that never really I think about too much, but maybe you could talk about what exactly that is and some of the risks and what coaches need to know about it and how to correct it. Well, the reason why this topic and also the topic I'm bringing up in the pearls is so important is that we're at the beginning of fall, the fall season now. So fall ball is underway. And I know out here there's tons of teams that don't play. The, the guys are just in a gym or there's guys that are playing travel ball, but still the emphasis is on trying to improve so that the spring season is a better season. So for all the coaches, especially the coaches that do kind of have a different schedule in the fall. What I want every coach to always do, because this is such a golden time, is to, with each pitcher, have some target issue that you're working on so that you can take it. It's something you see in his mechanics, and you can translate it into what could we do in the gym to make this better. You know, you can improve a pitcher's mechanical flaws when he's doing something in the gym that's related to the strength that he is not exhibiting on the mound. And you can make a change there. And it's such an innocent way to do it because you're not, the guy doesn't have a ball in his hand. He's not trying to get a strike. He's really working with his body. And by the time he gets back to the mound, he's able to transfer that architectural change that you've made. So the two topics I'm talking about in the teaching moment and the pearls are going to be things you can do with your guys in the gym. And this lateral trunk tilt is so intriguing to me. So first of all, when a pitcher tilts his body forward towards the catcher, that is called just plain and simple trunk tilt. So if you look at research articles that talk about trunk tilt, they're always talking about the way the trunk tilts forward. Lateral means in this description sideways. So a right-handed pitcher, when you're standing behind the catcher and you're looking at him, or no, let's let's get behind the pitcher. You're behind the rubber and you're he's doing a pen. So you're right there. You're not you're in the outfield view. And you're looking at a right-handed pitcher. His arm goes to the right And if his head and his trunk tilt to the left excessively, that is called lateral, excessive lateral trunk tilt. Every pitcher tilts slightly away, assuming he's a regular overarm thrower. Overarm is in the scientific terminology. A sidearm pitcher laterally tilts towards his pitching arm. So a right-handed sidearm pitcher will tilt to the right, and then his arm is out just to the side of his body. An overarm thrower will tilt in the opposite direction of his arm. And there's about a 10 to 15 degree tilt that's allowed. So what it is, is it's, you know, when pitching coaches are saying, keep your head over your front leg, take your head towards the plate. They, without knowing, are wanting them to control how far to that right-handed pitcher's left that he is tilting. So that's called lateral trunk tilt. A right-handed pitcher laterally tilts to the left. A left-handed pitcher laterally tilts to the right. In many cases, especially in the case of youth pitchers, and pitchers that have what I call a lot of fire, they get on the mound and they just take off. They have excessive lateral trunk tilt, and this is a very serious issue for the injury potential that it possesses. So here again, we've got scientists that are in a lab looking at these things, looking at the effect that tilting too far to the left for a right-handed pitcher would have on his shoulder and his elbow, because the interesting thing is he is going to show a little bit of an increase in his velocity as he tilts more to the left because he's changing the length of the lever. He's also, and this is very, it's more mechanical than I want to get, but he's changing the distance of the ball in his hand from the center of his body. So when he's tilting away, it can almost have an effect like, wow, he's, you know, really more powerful. 
But the problem is, is that when we look at what actually happens to the joints of the shoulder and the elbow, when a pitcher is tilting, and we know, so Joe, you can picture, especially young kids, you, you might call it, oh, they're pulling their head so far over. Right. Usually the head goes too. And sometimes it's at a weird angle. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes you can actually see the trunk is tilted over. They'll they'll be finishing so far over. And you can picture that, right, Joe? Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm following you correctly. So when you're talking about the trunk tilt, this is like when they come out of a max external rotation and they're starting to move the ball toward home plate and the glove side kind of pulls down and, and you see them from the back, like they're kind of leaning toward first base. Yes. Okay. And actually it doesn't start at that moment. I'll talk a minute about where that problem starts. Okay. But yes, you'll be, if you're standing behind the rubber, you're going to see their head and their glove arm, and the, their arms out in ball release, their glove arm and their head, they're way to the left. They're bent over in such a fashion that it looks weird. And that's the way. So here again is the difference in qualitative and quantitative. It's why I do qualitative analysis. I can't help anybody if I have to bring them into a lab and hook them up to everything. I let the other part of the field of sports science do that. I let them measure that. And then I take that and I have to train my eye to know, oh, it's excessive. And every one of your pitching coaches out there, you know what I'm talking about because you see it every day. When it looks like, geez, he's bending way over to the side, then you know he's bending excessively. If you don't even look at it, he's probably doing it right. So it's as simple as that. But in the cases of the pitchers that are doing that, it is very injurious because now these guys have gone and measured it and the amount of increase of force, especially at the elbow, and you can kind of see the arm is being strained. And also one of the things that I find, you know, being someone who works so much with pitchers who are coming off of surgery, I've never met them. They get referred to me. They call me. There is a commonality among certain elbow injuries, and it is this excessive tilt. And the, the reason why it's so dangerous, and they've measured it in the lab, they already know how much the UCL can take in terms of the amount of force it can handle. And baseball pitching is pushing it beyond that amount of force. That's why we always talk about you have to have muscles to help that ligament because it's already overstressed. Well, when the pitcher also has this lateral trunk tilt too excessively, he's going to increase that even more and put him in a total danger zone. So if you've got a pitcher on your staff and it's foul ball and you go, this is him. And by the way, frequently pitchers don't, they have location problems when they're doing this as well because their wrist isn't quite behind the ball. What these pitchers have is a lack of strength through their trunk muscles. So what we need to do is teach pitchers to be a little more upright, meaning not so far to the left for a right-handed pitcher when he's excessive. So what you're going to do is try to train him to be a little more upright. And this is all coming from trunk strength. So what you want to do is you want to do exercises that train his trunk to move straight ahead instead of bending over. And that bending starts to happen, and this is to your point, Joe, it starts to happen as he's making his stride. He's striding out and he's sideways to the play, but the second that foot hits down and he starts turning, that is where he starts to tilt to the left. So he hasn't already squared up to the plate. He's turning in a circle that turns him to the left. So pitchers have to be taught how to move sideways without turning. It's just like driving. You've got to know how to drive straight. You don't turn too soon. Same thing with the body. You've got to be able to go back and forth straight. You've got to be able to control your trunk when you're moving sideways. And when you combine the movement sideways to rotating to square up, you've got to make sure that you're turning on a very nice, even plane. These are all things that can be done with appropriate training for the trunk musculature in the gym. And it can be done by, in your head, looking at 
where is this pitcher having a problem and teaching him how to control his trunk during those movements. And most of the time they're already doing exercises that are important for the trunk, but they're not connecting the dots. So for any pitcher you have that is laterally flexing, show him this on the film and then show him how where you want him to be and then create movements or use movements. In fact, we have on one of our podcasts, we have... I think it was last year, there's a whole good morning sequence that is exactly the exercise where we do a regular good morning, then we do a good morning with the pitcher in his ball release position. So it's like he's doing a lunge and he's doing a forward trunk tilt. So if you go back to the podcast and just look for this, in fact, it was um, one of my clients was home in off season and we filmed this. So there's some exercises there. You can contact me if you need more ideas. But I want you to try to look at this as a skill that is a reflection of a weakness in the trunk. And, you know, once again, when you make any body part stronger, even if you don't get exact, you don't have to match it to the movement in pitching. But when he brings a stronger trunk and a stronger low back and abdominal section to the mound, he's going to be less apt to rotate incorrectly because he's built the correct strength, and that's the way the body works, so that you don't have to have detailed. I create exercises that match movements, but I also do basic general training. So this is a trunk issue and training these muscles. So don't let your pitchers get away with this, and also now is the time to develop that skill. It's perfect to do right now. By spring, you could have a pitcher that knows how to stay more upright and go more forward than he does sideways. Okay. So I have a question related to this, I think. Many pitchers are taught that velocity, for example, comes from rotation and rotation of the hips. And I think that pitchers may get in their head that they need to rotate more or rotate in a way that they're really not supposed to. Like, cause I, I know that I, I see, I see the effects of it when they kind of go into their leg lift and they kind of turn a little bit toward you know, the outfield. And then when they come out of it, would that be something if they over rotate that way? And then when they come out, it kind of like gets them a little too far over and, and may lead to this trunk tail issue. Yeah. On a mechanics level, he's on a mechanics level. He's, he's starting, you know, the pitcher starts sideways to the plate and then he has to step and turn. Right. And okay. It's just a half turn. If a pitcher is overturning, he's going to get this lateral trunk flexion. So he's going to be totally too much to the left. And in a sense, you could talk about that as being a circle. So if he's doing anything circular on balance, meaning he's on balance and he's counter rotating, meaning he puts his leg towards the outfield, he is literally contracting the rotating muscles on the standing leg. So when he comes off of that, he's going to swing in a circle And his whole body will follow that circle. So yes, on a mechanical level, things he's doing can be the cause of that. And that is for a good coach to look at and say, hey, he ends up way over here. Where did he start that problem from? It always starts during right prior to foot landing, but that issue can start on balance. So yes, that's a a very good point. So when you're getting to the mechanics of this prior to spring, you want to definitely work with whatever issue you see as the cause of it mechanically. However, the pitcher who's doing that has weakened his trunk musculature so much that if he doesn't change that in this off season or start to strengthen that, he's not going to, no matter how much he wants to, going to be able to straighten out because he's flexed so far to the left that his right side of his of his trunk has become extremely weak because it's had to stretch way over there. So the right side of the trunk would have to be strengthened and so he can release that left side and now you've got someone who's starting to become balanced. So yes, looking at that issue when you're dealing with the mechanics and then allowing that pitcher to have developed a good trunk, you put those things together and you're going to have a pitcher that moves better down the hill. Okay, thank you. Good point. You've been listening, Joe. Well, I mean, that's what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah, listen. exactly. I, and, and I do five see five stars. Thanks. I uh, I see a lot of pitchers, especially at the major league level, where they they do this kind of internal, just 
you know, and then they come out of it and, you know, they're, they're running off towards first base or whatever, the right-handers, because they've, they've been tilting so much. And, you know, so I, I feel like it's a pretty common issue. Yeah, sometimes pitchers that counter-rotate have this problem, and some of them don't. I mean, if you counter-rotate, some of them have the strength to stop themselves. You know, it's like speeding down the street. If you're good, you can keep from going up on the sidewalk. If you're not good, you're just going fast uh, down the road. I mean, it's it's a matter of being able to control your body and do what you're supposed to do. That's why, as a kinesiologist, I don't teach movements that aren't necessary because I don't want you to have to learn how to control it. I want you to teach the muscles how to do what they do, and then it becomes a little easier. So that's the way that, you know, a sports scientist would deal with it. But that's a, a good point. 